All right, everybody. Today we're going to be uh, solving uh, proportional relationships. Uh, let's start with number 17. <clears throat> As I said in class, there's two ways to solve a proportional relationship once you've got it set up. The first way is to find the ratio. Uh, finding the ratio, you could go ahead and simply remember that every fraction is a division problem. That, and that division problem answer is the ratio. So in this particular case, I have 6 divided by 25. 6 divided by 25 is going to equal, oh gosh, um, well, let's put it in our calculator. I'm thinking it's going to be about, well, I can't even fathom that right now. But let's, let's try to solve it with the calculator. Uh, 6 divided by 25 equals 0.24. Now, after we find uh, what our ratio is, we have to multiply it to the number on the bottom. And we should get an answer about thinking 7.2, 7.2. All right, now <clears throat> that is our answer to D. Now the other way we learned about it in class is to go ahead and use cross products to do it and set up an equation. This is the way I want you guys to kind of practice it because it's a lot safer. Uh, this system only works if you remember that the bottom number gets multiplied, okay, and the top number, in other words, if this 30 was on top and the D was on the bottom, then you would have to divide. And that can confuse a lot of people. So I want you to get used to doing it with the cross product. All right, so I'm going to use my highlighter here. And in yellow, I realize that I have to multiply 6 and 30 together. Well, 6 times 30 has to equal my other pr cross product, and that's going to be 25 and D. Now that we know that we have our equation set up, we can go ahead and solve. First of all, 6 times 30 is 180. And 25 times D, of course, is just 25D. Now we're ready to solve. Uh, this is a one-step equation where we have to realize uh, to get rid of the 25 and leave D alone, we have to divide by 25. Whatever I divide from one side, I got to divide from the other. Well, 180 divided by 25 equals 7.2. And we cross out our 25 because any number over itself is 1, leaving us 72 or 7.2 equals D. And that is our answer. And for those of you doubting that 180 divided by 25 is 7.2, let's try it. 180 divided by 25 does equal 7.2. All right, I showed you the two different ways to go ahead and solve this problem. Remember, the safer way is cross products. Uh, if you choose to do it by finding the ratio, you must remember whether to multiply or divide when you're up top or on the bottom. All right, let's move on to number 19. Number 19 says for every person who has the flu, there are six people who uh, have only flu-like symptoms. Uh, if a doctor sees 40 patients, determine approximately how many patients you would expect to have only flu-like symptoms. Well, let's break this down. First of all, for every one person who has the flu, one person uh, has the flu, has flu, we'll just put HF, there are six people that uh, only have flu-like symptoms. Flu-like symptoms. Uh, now they're asking if the doctor sees 40 patients, 
determine approximately how many patients would you expect to have flu-like symptoms. Look at the question very carefully. It's talking about if the doctor sees 40 patients. So one of our sides of our equation has to have 40 in it, and the 40 is going to stand for patients, total patients. And they want to know how many of them are only going to have flu-like symptoms, flu-like symptoms. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try to solve this. It has to equal something. And remember, whatever is on the top has to be on top here, and whatever is on the bottom has to be on the bottom here. Well, on the bottom and top here, uh, we see flu-like symptoms are on top. So we look at the information we give it, and we see that six is flu-like symptoms. So uh, we have to put six on top. We would not put one on top because those are the people that have the flu. Now, I would be tempted to put one on the bottom here, but they're not asking us how many people have the flu here. They're saying the total patients. And out of the total patients that we see in here, there were six that had flu-like symptoms and one that had the flu. So that would be six plus one. Now we can go ahead and set this up correctly. Well, six plus one is seven. So I could just go ahead and turn this into six over seven. And let's solve. Well, um, I can also go ahead and rewrite this off, but I'm just gonna erase this because that was just showing me what it was. Um, and P was also just showing me that that was all the patients. So um, now I need to find out what T is. Uh, T is being divided by 40, so I'm gonna multiply it by 40. That allows me to get rid of the 40 on the bottom because whatever's on the top, if it's on the bottom, I can slash it out. But whatever I multiply to one side, I have to multiply to the other side. Remember in math, we're all about equality. So I multiplied that side by 41, that means, or 40 over one, so that means I'll multiply this side by 40 over one. Well, 40 times six is gonna be um, 200 and, uh, well, 40. I know this because four times six is 24. So 40 times six must be 240. Now I have 240 and I have to divide that by my denominator, which is seven. Let's see, 240 divided by 7. That's going to give me 32.28. 32.28. Uh, okay. 32.28 people. We're talking about people. Remember that. 38 point, 34.28. Thank you. 34.28. Well, the reason I wrote these first two is because since we're talking about people, we have to round up or round down. There's no such thing as 0.28 people. So since eight is bigger than five, that would make this three, but three is still not bigger than five. So that means there's gonna be uh, on the average 34 people. And since I got rid of my 40, on the other side of my equal sign will be T. That means uh, 32 people or 34 people out of 40 uh, will only have flu-like symptoms. Okay, so my answer would be uh, 34 people or patients. I really don't have to write any more because that's all they asked me. How many patients? My answer would be 34. All right, uh, the last one I'll be doing today is number 21. Jeremiah is saving money from a tutoring job. After the first three weeks, he saved $135. Okay. 
So he's got $135. Assume the situation is proportional. Well, let's see, Jeremiah is saving money from a tuition job after the first three weeks. So this is three weeks worth of work. Three weeks of work. All right, use the unit rate to write an equation relating the amount saved, S, to the number amount of uh, weeks, W, worked. At this rate, how much would Jeremiah save after eight weeks? All right, so over here, we're talking about eight weeks, so we're going to put 8W, okay? Uh, and we want to know how much money he's going to make, so that will be... Uh, let's see, savings, S. All right, and that has to equal something. Well, over here in three weeks, he earned $135. And now I have my equation where I can help solve this problem. All right, the first way I could do it is just to take 135 and divide it by W. Or excuse me, not W, uh, the number of weeks, which is 3. I'm going to take the W's out of here because we already know what the W's are. We're looking for what the savings is. So that means we're looking for S. All right, at this rate, how much will he save? All right, so um, this is really simple. We could do it one of two ways. I could take... 135 and divide it by 3, find my ratio and multiply it by 8. Uh, let's try that. 135 divided by 3 equals 45. That makes means uh, he makes $45 a week. So then I would just multiply 45 times 8. Does everyone see how that worked? That's 135 divided by three. We do that because every fraction is really a division problem. And that's gonna equal 45. Now I can take that $45 because that represents one week and that would allow me to go ahead and uh, multiply it to eight. And 45 times eight is gonna give me $360. So my answer would be 360. Now, for those of you wondering why I went ahead and divided by three, I did say every fraction is a division problem, and that should be self-explanatory. But if you wanted a more uh, detailed explanation, remember, we're trying to find out how much one is. If I find out how much one week is, I can find out how much eight weeks is by multiplying it. So I would divide the bottom by three to get one on the bottom, which means I have to divide the top by three because whatever I do to one part of my fraction, I have to do the other. That's how we get 135 divided by three. So let's go ahead and use the cross multiplication product method now. If I use the cross multiplication of products, I would realize I have to multiply 135 times eight. Well, 135, times eight has to equal three times five. That means uh, after I, oh, I'm sorry, this is an S and not five. I was totally wrong, S. So um, it has to equal three S. I'm gonna make my S just a little bit different. So. I don't confuse anybody else, including myself. So now we're going to take 135 and multiply it by 8. That gives me $1,080. And that has to equal 3 times S. Well, that's 3S. 
We know we have to divide 3 from 3s in order to get s by itself. And whatever I divide from one side, I have to divide from the other. So I have 1080 divided by 3. And that equals 360. And you see how we got the same answer once again. Either method will help you solve the problem. So um, I'm hoping I gave you enough information to go ahead and work out the rest of this homework assignment on your own. If not, I'll see you in class and we'll work it out there. Have a great night and a great weekend.